our educational system was set up in the late 18 and early 1900s to meet the needs of our industrial economy. Public schools graduated students for factories with a skilled labor force and provided basic literacy to the masses. This type of education was the norm. Secondary education delivered the managerial and professional leadership for an industrial economy. Higher education provided the specialists, doctors, engineers, lawyers, etc. You have assembly line schools to meet the needs of an assembly line economy. They function with the philosophy that one size fits all and learning is based on repetition and drill. Society supported public school education as the means to provide their children with the skills necessary to succeed in the industrial economy. Things have changed and we now live in a globalized world. Who knows what the economy will look like from one month to the next or what skills our graduates will need. Our current ways just cannot keep up with these rapid changes. Focus is now on measuring and comparing student performance. This requires more rigorous testing with higher stakes for those schools not making the grade. Educators are being held responsible for the results since the reputation and that of the schools depends on these results. Educators use curriculum that teaches to the tests and still we fall behind. So now we have the common core state standards which will change nothing if we focus on meaningless standardized tests. Schools are not preparing our children for a successful, happy future, nor expanding their possibilities in life or enriching their experiences. Our children spend the first five to six years of their life exploring and discovering learning. They start school and are expected to conform to a mold that they may not fit them. They see little or no benefit to their learning. They are told to pay attention to subjects that don't interest them and are taught in a cookie style approach. As a result, students retain very little of what they're taught. It's time we give learning back to the children. Allow them to follow their passions. Give them choices in the materials they use and the time necessary for each to reach their individual potential. As educators, we must stop controlling learning and let learning happen. Don't ban the tools they use for learning, but model for them the proper way to use them. Rather than feel threatened by these educational changes, schools need to embrace them. Technology and the internet, along with the growing open educational resources, massive open online classes, and online college courses offered to learners of all ages, they're the resources for learning. If our community, our nation, our world is to survive, education must take leadership in the community. Who better to bridge community resources to learners and present opportunities to facilitate, explore, create, enrich, and share with the world. Rather than organizing the school by grades, organize the school by topic, science, art, English, shop, whatever. This frees educators to follow what they're most passionate about and share it in ways that ignite and excite learners regardless of age. We need just open our eyes and see what lays before us. If we are to keep up with the rest of society, education must make these changes now and stop being in competition, but in collaboration for the good of the world.